Assalamu alaikum everyone. Welcome you all to our today's class. Today we will discuss about chromosome manipulation. So, what is chromosome manipulation? It is generally the alteration of ploid 11 to haploid, diploid, tetraploid, that means N, thrice N, and 4N by temperature, pressure, or chemical shock. So, we know that uh, we human beings are diploid organism. Fish is also a diploid organism. Changing the diploid level of a human being, fish, or any other diploid organisms by using temperature, pressure, or chemical shock is called chromosome manipulation. Chromosome manipulation is mainly of two types. Ganogenesis where the offspring are completely of all mother genes and androgenesis where the offspring is completely identical of the father or have all the genes of the father. So now let's uh, talk about gynogenesis. So to a new uh, offspring genetic components or genetic material or genetic input comes both from the father and mother and with the con combination of paternal and maternal gene the offspring genes are formed but uh, in gynogenesis we inactivate the sperm or basically we inactivate the paternal DNA or component that is within the sperm by temperature pressure or chemical shock so what do we mean by saying that we uh, inactivate the paternal uh, inactivating the paternal DNA components so this means that we are just uh, destroying the parent, uh, paternal DNA so there has no genetical input from the father the offspring has only the genetic components of its mother now there can be a question in our mind that if uh, uh, we, we it's like that we got uh, haploidy from father on N from father and N or haploidy from the mother which creates a twice N or diploid zygote but as we are inactivating the sperm the input from the father is zero so how the diploid is, is restored basically when the ogonia is being activated by the sperm the polar body leaves the body and sperm and ogonia creates diploid zygote but in case of gynogenesis if we do the same after the activation of egg polar body will leave the body and there will be only n sets of chromosome from the mother as we have already deactivated the dna material of the father that's why the shock is given so the shock prevents the exit of the second polar body as a result of shock the polar body fuses with the ogonia and creates diploid zygote on the basis of time of the shock given the gynogenesis uh, can be of two types so if the shock is given just before the extrusion of the polar body it is called meiotic gynogenesis and if the shock is given to blocking the first mitotic division in developing or activated egg it is called mitotic genesis in in some slides uh, we will know about meiotic and mitotic gynogenesis in details so let's talk about meiotic gynogenesis so in this picture uh, you can see that uh, there is we know normally that we have like eggs and we have sperm so when the sperm inactivate the egg activate the egg then the egg creates polar body and the polar body leaves the body and the sperm DNA content and the eggs they fuse together and create diploid zygote but in case of meiotic gynogenesis we are going to inactivate the DNA or destroy the DNA material of the sperm by UV irradiation or ultraviolet irradiation so when we inactivate or destroy the DNA we didn't kill the sperm we just kill the or destroy the DNA material we we need the sperm to 
go and penetrate the egg so that we can have fertilization so the sperm will go and penetrate the egg the egg will produce second polar body and the second polar body will tend to extrude out of the system but at this moment we are going to keep a temperature pressure or chemical shock so that the polar body could not get out of the body so the polar body after after, have, after giving the shock the polar body will get fused with the maternal genetic things of the eggs and they will produce a twice end organism which which will be the new offspring with all maternal all maternal gen genome because the the paternal or the father sperm do not contain any kind of uh, DNA materials because we already have destroyed it. So the second vulnerable body nucleus fuses with egg nucleus to form diploid zygote and all genes are from the mother. So now let's uh, talk about the mitotic gynogenesis. So in mitotic gynogenesis we do as it is from the name we can see that it is gynogenesis so again there will be no input from the father so we are going to inactivate the parental the sperm DNA content or sperm uh, chromosomal materials that we have we are going to destroy it by UV radiation and when the sperm will go and penetrate the egg there will be second polar body will be formed and second polar body will tend to get out of the system but in this case we are not going to prevent the extrusion of the polar body but we will we will uh, permit it to lift the system so we will now have a haploid zygote where there is only the maternal DNA things because there is no paternal input so when this maternal things goes through cell divisions they will uh, try to try to form cleavage by replicating its uh, DNA and nuclear materials so when they are trying to when it is the time to create cell wall and cell membrane and particularly separate themselves just before that we are going to give heat and pressure shock which will prevent the first cleavage and separation of the two identical haploid nuclei and these two due to the shock will fuse together and create a diploid zygote where all genes are from the mother and the homozygous homozygosity will be restored and thus the new offspring will be 100% clone of its mother or its uh, uh, it's it's all gene within itself will be the same as its mother so we will have a new offspring that is identical to its mother but there is no paternal or there is no input from its father so now let's uh, talk about androgenesis so till now we are just trying to eliminate the input of a father on the offspring now let's eliminate the input of mother in the offspring so in this case we are going to deactivate or destroy the nuclear material or the DNA material of the egg so we are going to destroy the egg nucleus by UV radiation and our sperm it is now full with DNA content or the chromosomal material in itself and when the sperm comes and penetrate the egg penetrate the egg and it as yes, there is uh, no chromosomal material or DNA material in the egg so there will be no polar body or anything so the sperm will penetrate and get inside and there will be like a haploid zygote that the chromosomal materials are only comes from the father so when this parent uh, paternal or the chromosome metal that comes from the father it is going through the cell divisions so it will just come it will just uh, make a copy of its nucleus and all the chromosomal materials and it's trying to get separated by creating cell walls and membrane and all those things we will just give a temperature shock so just uh, the, at the same time and same way that we have given in the mitotic gynogenesis which will prevent the separation on the prevent the first cleavage and separation of the two identical haploid nuclei and due to the shock they will fuse together and the diploid zygote will be formed so the new spring or new offspring will be a diploid organism and the new offspring that have 
the all the genes from its father and it is will be a hundred percent uh, copy of its father so every gene in this new offspring will be homozygous and it is like uh, in here the inbreeding is 100 percent and the offspring it will be a like the copy a carbon copy of its father and it will have all the genetical uh, components and all the genetical structure or features as like its father now let's talk about something we are just destroying a lot of things without destroying let's create something this time so we are going to see how we can create a triploid fish so we have we know that fish is a diploid organisms but now we are going to make something that is not natural we are going to make triploid fish so let's try to create something so if, so now we are not going to use UV radiation to eliminate any DNA matter or any destroy any egg DNA DNA or sperm DNA so the sperm will go penetrate the egg and then the egg will activate and it will create second polar body but just before when the second polar body is tend to get out of the body we will just give the shock so that the polar body cannot get out of the system and there we have like polar body haploid from the uh, mother applied from the father so both these three they fuse together with egg nucleus and sperm nucleus to form triploid zygote and this is how we get triploidy so for triploidy we have the second polar body which is haploid then the mother egg and the father sperm so these three haploid to fuse together and create triploid organisms so now let's see how we can create a tetraploid fish so we have created triploid now so let's see how we can create a triploid tetraploid fish so in case of tetraploid fish so when the sperm is going to activate the egg nucleus or penetrate the egg nucleus there will be this in the same way we know that the second polar body will be created and it will be get a polar body will be extruded out of the system so in this case we are not going to prevent the extrusion we will let the polar body get out of the system or get out of the zygote so from the haploid input from the father and haploid input from the mother this haploid things fuse together and creates a diploid zygote and this diploid zygote going through mitotic divisions and in this division that cells they are they they goes through with different divisions so when they are going to divide they will copy their cells and its chromosomal and nuclear things but when they are trying to create cell walls and cell membrane and completely separate themselves we will give heat or pressure shock which will prevent the first cleavage and separation of the two identical diploid nuclei and these two nuclei will fuse together and create a tetraploid organisms so why we use triploid or tetraploid we use triploid or tetraploid so that we can uh, and we can do different kind of research work we can we also use it for food productions we also use it so that we can uh, decrease the pressure of inbreeding and hybridizations on the local and we can also like uh, for uh, conservation of genes so now let's talk about something that is quite interesting and we have all heard a lot about the thing that is called clones or cloning so clone means a group of individual which are genetically identical and that is uh, there is no genetical difference among them so there will be like if we have like two fishes they are identical from head to toe and everything they are copy of one another and they have no differences not just by their external but also in their genetic level so they have the same genes and same genetic pattern same genetic patterns in among themselves so the second generation of mitotic gynogens and androgens is clone so you can see that in the mitotic gynogenesis we have uh, there is the zygote there is a haploid zygote forms and when the haploid zygotes try to go through the cell divisions we give it shock and make it twice end so the mitotic gynogens is a clone of its mother and the, and the androgenesis we what we do we uh, when the haploid zygote is from from the father's sperm dna content then when it goes through the division cell division we give the shock and uh, and we prevent the elimination of the we prevent the elimination of the uh, so sorry we didn't prevent we, we just try to keep it uh, 
the way it should be and we fuse that genetical components of the father and make it uh, a clone of the father so the, there is a different applications of the clones the clones are used in variety variety of research area these are super your genes for for the high food production it is used for the selective picking program it is also used in toxicological study or toxicological biosis these kind of things are used worldwide so this so that's all for today